guys, welcome back to the sports commute on YouTube. Yes, I'm gonna say that's on YouTube because you're not gonna hear this. This is just the intro for the YouTube video. Uh, today, uh, well, we got a very special episode since it's Valentine's Day, and of course, something special. Uh, but so this episode's gonna be a little different. If you didn't know, we're gonna half split up the video into two halves. We have one half with a very special guest. And you'll see in the video then the other half is going to be just us talking and we're just going to talk sports like normal just me and dan so uh thank you guys for watching hope you like and subscribe keep going keep watching the video you can fast forward if you don't want to hear this you can hear podcast but uh yeah follow us on instagram twitter whatever the hell you want and uh thanks for watching see you in the video <laughs> I need a pen. Alright, I'm gonna have them, okay? Sweet. Got them up at the Fox booth. Alright, I guess. Oh, shit. <laughs> This is you nervous? A little bit. <laughs> this will be fun. Here, you want to borrow my bottle, Adam? Huh? No. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. Yeah, I'll Yeah, yeah. Oh, there, there he is. is. There hey, is. hey, can you can you uh, hang up and redial it again? Cause I couldn't pick it up on the iPad. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'll just call you first. Okay. Holy shit. You ready? So, that was quick. If you heard who it was, if not, that is Dave Moody. He's a NASCAR commentator, MRN network, have you ever heard of him? And that'll be our guest today. Very special. He's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know, but, uh,. Nice. Alright. Alright, Matt, go ahead. Alright, hello. Alright. Alright. Cool, cool. the clash first if you want oh the clash right <laughs> this past saturday what a race the clash at daytona took place uh it ended with a six car shootout for the win where i thought it was pretty interesting uh denny hamlin uh lap down comes back to push his teammate eric jones to the finish for the win yep yeah that was very wrecked filled race and it was a very 
interesting to watch. You know, it was a lot of fun racing as well. You know, good to see. Uh, it's it's a nice, I guess, I'll use the term loosely, a preseason style race yet. Right. So. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, there, there's minimal risk, uh, substantial reward. It pays pretty well. Uh, you get a real nice trophy. You get known forever as the push class champion of 2020. Uh, you're racing a car that you're not going to use again, you know, certainly through speed weeks again this year. Right. Uh, so you see guys take a lot of chances and maybe make some moves that are considerably more aggressive than you'll see later on in the week for sure. Definitely. And, uh, the extra blocking attempts especially. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Huh. Yeah. Um, Definitely. I didn't have any complaints about the race. I thought it was... Um, well contested, there was no real uh, scandal, I suppose, you know? No, I don't think so. Can't say clean racing, but... No, definitely not. Fun racing. Very fun. Alright, uh, I guess that'll take us to... You know what, Matt? Uh, since you can full story prepared... Alright, so all well, this weekend, well, after the clash, or before, it was before the clash, I believe... I went to see the movie Ford vs. Ferrari, which is a really good mo movie. It came out in 2019. It was about two guys, Carroll Shelby and Ken Miles, and they were just trying to beat out Ferrari, which is in the name, at the Le Mans race in 1966. Very recommended. I love it. Great movie. Well, most people probably don't know who Ken Miles is. He was a British driver. He served in the British Army from 1938 to 1945. He was inducted in the Mo uh, Motorsports Hall of Fame, and he was part of the Shelby Cobra racing team with Carroll Shelby, of course, in the 60s. In 1966, he won the 24-hour at Daytona, the 12-hour at Sebring, and was cheated out of the 24-hour win at Le Mans, so he almost got all three. But uh, basically, he did a lot with Carroll Shelby to try to beat that Ferrari team, which he ended up doing course and uh he ended up dying in 1966 that year during testing with the new car at riverside he drove 200 miles an hour and flipped and ended up dying which was pretty sad but the other guy carol shelby was an automotive designer race driver and entrepreneur he was an author as well he served in world war ii and he had his race team started in 1962 Sports Illustrated Driver of the Year in 1956 and 1957. And he had a retired due to heart conditions, but I guess he was a really good driver. He won with Roy Salvadori in the 1959 Le Mans race. And uh, basically, he teamed up with Ken Miles and a bunch of other people to try to do, uh, defeat Ferrari with the Ford team, basically. But uh, he died in 2012. And that's about all for that. That's my story of the week. Let's see. All right. Yeah. Sounds pretty good. Very good. Uh, you know, all right, guys. Are, are, are you done with me? Uh, I mean, if you'd like to stay, you could. I mean, it's up to you. Well, it, it, it's, uh, you know, it, if you need me, if you want to... Do something with me, let's do it, and we'll, do, we'll get on with it. Alright, alright. We'll move into the Daytona 500 since you're down at uh, Daytona Beach there. Yep. So, um, right now we have Ricky Stenhouse and Alex Bowman on the front row there. Yep. With the uh, coming up on Thursday. Yep. To decide the rest of the, uh, the starting lineup there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you have any expectations for, uh, well, we'll start with the duels. Yeah, I, I think they'll be a good deal more calm uh, than the Bush class was, mainly because there's a whole lot more on the line. Definitely. Uh, starting position for the Daytona 500, install selection for the Daytona 500. So uh, you've got you've got five guys that do not have guaranteed starting spots that are not locked into this race. Uh, one of them is Daniel Suarez, who finished uh, one spot out of the playoffs last year. Those five guys probably will not sleep between now and then. It's uh, it's a pretty nervous time. Definitely. Uh, last place in the Daytona 500 uh, pays somewhere between 200 and 250 thousand dollars for a small team. That's a that's a pretty healthy payday. That's crazy. And the difference between making the 500 and not making the 500 is huge for those teams. Definitely. Oh yeah. 
couldn't agree more. Yeah, I yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Um, the way I see it right now, um, with the way that Daniel Suarez had run during qualifying, uh, if he gets behind a good couple Toyotas there, I think he's got a good shot of actually advancing into the Daytona 500. Definitely. Um, however, I do see that he could possibly make some mistakes, get hung out to dry, end up in the back. Just have to wait for Thursday to see what happens. Yeah. Which duel is he in? Oh, uh, I think he's in the first. He is. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. I'll have to... Well, I was probably going to watch him anyways, but that'll be interesting. Yeah. Um, so for the actual, uh, the Great American Race there, do you have any expectations for perhaps a, a, a winner who's going to cause the big one there? No, you know, predicting a winner in the Daytona 500, predicting a winner at Daytona or Talladega is virtually impossible. Definitely. Uh, most weeks at most racetracks, there are 18 or 20 different teams that could theoretically win a race without really surprising anybody. I think when you come to Daytona, you add probably 10 more to that list. Out of the 40, I think there are probably 30 anyway that could win this race. Uh, you know, we, we saw Justin Haley win at yeah. Daytona last July in a first-year startup team. Right. For a first-year startup team. So that tells you how unpredictable these races are. Yeah. Definitely. Anything could happen in a trick to play race there. Yeah, especially. Um, well, how about just the rest of the season? How do you see uh, maybe the, the chase shaking out? I know we're, we're not so far into the season, but you know. Yeah, we haven't even started yet. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to figure out the end until you at least see the beginning. But, uh, you know, the... the you know that Joe Gibbs Racing is going to be strong. They won more than half the races last year, 19 out of 36. Uh, it's going to take some pretty hard work to knock them off their throne. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the Chevrolets can do, whether yep. they can bounce back from a couple of down years. Uh, you know, Stuart Haas Racing was not as strong as they wanted to be. Team Penske was not as strong as they wanted to be. They made some changes during the offseason. So, you know, usually by about Memorial Day, we're able to tell who's gotten the job done and is going to contend and who is. Right. Uh, how, how about, you know, um, uh, Jimmy Johnson, what do, you, what do you expect him to do or think you might be able to see him do this year? Well, I hope he's able to go out the way Jeff Gordon did, and that's oh. to go out with a win in his final season. Yeah. Uh, he, he certainly has earned that. Uh, unfortunately, in professional sports, you don't get what you earn. You get you, you know you don't get what you deserve. You get what you earn. Right. Uh, so whether whether the 48 team and Hendrick Motorsports can right the ship and get him a win or not this year remains to be seen. But uh, I expect him to be. He ended last year on an upswing. I expect he'll be more competitive this year than he was in uh, in 2019. Definitely. Yeah. Obviously, Jimmy Johnson right now uh, in his final in his final season. You know, we uh, we thank him on an incredible career. Yeah. Uh, do you see him making it past the round of 12 there? It, it's tough to predict. Um, I, I think first things first, you win, You know, you got to win a race. Uh, goal two is to make the playoffs, and then you worry about advancing out of the round of 16 or onto the round of 12. I, you know, based on the struggles that they've had in the last couple of years, I would say an appearance in the round of 12 and a win at some point of the season would be a pretty good way to end it up. That'd be great. Yeah, we'd always love to see. Uh, very it's, not, it's not very often you see some of these guys with great accolades and everything go out on a high. Yeah. No. So, we'll just have to see how the season plays out through it. Um, you know what? I forgot to ask this about the Daytona 500. We've got a Hendrick, uh, Hendrick engine on the pole there. And uh, uh, actually both Hendrick engines on the yeah. front row there. Front four. Yeah, front oh, God. Four. How do you expect the, uh, the Chevy to shake out there? I don't have an idea. You know, no, that's the that's the fun part about Daytona is you, you just you don't know what's going to happen. Um, you, you know, it, you, you don't know you don't know who's going to finish the Daytona Five Hundred. Definitely. Like it's win it. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Matt, you got anything for uh, Mr. Yeah. Here? Uh, how do you feel about the Penske uh, driver ch or the, the crew chief change and everything? Well, uh, I mean they they put four cars in the top eight or nine. Yeah. Most teams would be more than happy with that. Roger Penske is not most most team owners. Um, unless they're contending for a championship, and they really didn't last year, no. he's not going to be satisfied. So he's shuffled the deck. He's broken up some very successful and very uh, talented crew chief driver tandems. Uh, 
uh, in an effort to try and get some different results. And I think you know, that's another one of those things that by Memorial Day, we're going to have a pretty good idea right now. It just remains to be seen. Definitely. Right. Yeah. Uh, and how do you think Ricky Stenhouse is going to do in his new car? Well, that, that race team has worked awfully hard. Uh, you know, they, they've, been in the, they've been in this game for, you know, uh, between the Xfinity Series and Cup for, for it's a better part of a quarter century. And they've gotten a little better every year. Obviously, winning the pole for the Daytona 500 is a big deal for them. Uh, whether they can carry that on and make it a race-winning season or not, one thing we know for sure, Ricky Stenhouse will not get out-tried. He won't get out-worked, and he won't get pushed around. Uh, he's a tough customer. He yeah. stands his ground and Absolutely. It'll be to see what they can do together. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I think we did pretty right. well on that. Okay, guys. Thank yep. you. I appreciate you it. You too. Yep. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate Thank you. it as well. All right, we'll see you. See you. Yeah, see you. All right. Do you want to talk about anything? Uh, I got nothing. You got nothing? <laughs> so, there you go. We're still recording. Hold up. You know, I'm just going to bring something up because I ran out of questions. Um, yeah, we'll come back on Thursday. It'll be up on Friday. So there was uh, Dave Moody for you. There was Dave Moody. I kind of recorded that for a little bit on the YouTube. But, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm, why not? I'll go more into detail with the Ford vs. Ferrari thing because I kind of sped through it. I thought it would be longer. But uh, if any of you haven't watched it, it's a great movie. Like I said multiple times, I it's got Matt Damon and uh, shoot the, the guy who played Batman, the first guy. Damn, I should have wrote this down, but uh, I I was dumb. But uh, anywho, uh, so this movie is basically about Ken Miles, like I said, and Carol Shelby. It starts off with. Carol Shelby, and since he was a race car driver, and uh, <clears throat> he uh, starts out with, yeah, like I said in that, Carol Shelby also ran in the Formula One series from 1958 to 1959, eight championship races and several non-championship races, and uh, he co-drove the Aston Martin, I didn't really say that, the DBR1 for the 1959 Le Mans race. <clears throat> But uh, this guy was a really good uh, person. I know you heard about him before with Shelby, especially. Uh, but uh, let's see. Uh, he uh, he wrote a book. He wrote a memoir called the Sh Carol Shelby Story, published in 1967. It was by Pocket Books. It was basically about him and his revolutioning car that he created for the. Uh, Le Mans race, and he described that this Le Mans win, well, yeah, the Le Mans whole big thing with Le Mans and Ken Miles was amazing, and it changed his life, and it just changed how everything went, and he basically met Ken Miles, and he basically made like a brother almost with him, and it was a big thing. He also went to the Motorsports Hall of Fame in 1991. Oh, the, oh, excuse me. The International Motorsports Hall of Fame in 1991. The Motorsports Hall of Fame in 1992. The Automotive Hall of Fame in 1992 as well. The Diecast Hall of Fame, which I was like, what the hell? Why would he go in the Diecast Hall of Fame? But then I'm like, oh, wait. He's got his cars that he made. And that was 2009. And surprisingly, I didn't know this. He worked with Dodge, Ford, and Oldsmobile. And uh, that that's... It's pretty crazy, but, uh, yeah, that's, like, that's Shelby for you. That's his background, and then I didn't get this to Ken Miles. I was kind of in a hurry. I was dumb, and I didn't explain as much, but, uh, so the way he was cheated out of this Le Mans race, I guess it was kind of true how they did it in the movie. It was a little different in the movie as well, but, uh, what actually happened was he was leading by a Jesus. Mile, he was way ahead. He was gone. Like there was no way he was totally winning this race. He had the best car all day, out of all of it, even besting the Ferraris, because in the movie, like it said, or like it said or showed, which I have no clue if it's true or not, he just dominated the race. And uh, 
So what happened was he was leading in the Ford Executive Leo. I don't want to mess his last name up. BB, which was the executive for the race team. He wanted all three cars to finish side by side, crossing the line at the same time for a very historical photo. Here's where it comes the difference between the movie and the real life. The movie, they were literally side by side. You couldn't tell the difference of who won or not. In the real life picture that I saw, there was one car in front, two cars behind, or actually it was two cars in front and one behind, so I don't really know. Uh, but the driver in the second place car, which was the number two car of the of McLaren and Eamon, started 20 yards behind, and they said they won the race because, like I said, they were 20 yards behind Miles, and they finished, they crossed first, so-called. This is just a way that the Ford executive could screw Ken Miles because he really didn't like him. He didn't like Carroll Shelby, so they just got back at it. And it just screwed him inevitably out of the win and completing that big three for Ken Miles. So, uh, yeah, that's my uh, thing. But I had one more little thing for the 500. So we saw lap 66. Joey Logano, Kyle Busch. What's your opinion on that, Darren? The way I see it was, you know, just like uh, just like David said previously, you know, uh, guys were getting a little more aggressive. The race really didn't count for anything. Right. Uh, but Joey pulled a double block, though, after Kyle Lewis had edged his nose in there, so. Do you think it was clean? I think it was racing. See, that's what I'm saying. But then I looked at Twitter, and then Brad Kozlowski was cussing out Brett, or Joey, saying that it was stupid and everything. Why? I don't really know how it's stupid because... But, 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 can we, can we just go back to, this man drove into the side of a fence. What? Did you not hear about this? Wait, what? Brad Kozlowski, on his way out to practice the other day... He hit a fence? Drove into the side of a fence. Fucking hell. How? No, not on track. Not even on track. Wait. Time out. Like a iron, like a, like a metal fence, like a metal fence. He just smacked it. A fence that was blocking the garage and the um, the pit road. I gotta put this in the video. <laughs> I'm gonna probably put that on the YouTube thing, but that that's hilarious. I didn't know. <laughs> that that's hilarious. I did not see that. And then, how do you feel? Dennis and Hamlin and your boy Chase Elliott got into it again. Once again, they're, like Logano and Rowdy, they're back at it again. I say let's just let cooler heads prevail and move on with it. Racing is racing. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that just, what? Jones... That Jones boy won the race. Austin Dillon came in second. Clint Boyer was third. Kyle Larson was fourth. Ryan Newman. I was really surprised at how good Ryan Newman and Kyle Larson did. Because they've been struggling. Larson won Dover last year out of complete luck. And Newman hasn't done anything in the sixth car. But Denny Hamlin was one lap down, so he couldn't win the race. And that was the only guys running. Everybody else didn't finish. Like, yeah, you know, but that's Jesus. Just how it works at Daytona. Yeah, how it works at Daytona. It doesn't finish with six guys. This is the clash. Come on, guys. Yeah. Like. All right. Well, um, shall we come back to it on Thursday? Definitely. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah. All right. Cool.